I'm here with Marsha Wright, dance interpreter at the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. So Marsha, please talk to us about the context of dance in Virginia. How was dance in Virginia different from that of the New England colonies? And what were mixed company sets like? Dance in Virginia was primary uh, from the time that settlers came here. Uh, there might be some dancing and sailors jigs on board. They were welcomed by the First Peoples and Natives in this area with dancing. And when there was free time uh, in the settlement of the colony, of course, some celebration, uh, birth night ball and um, um, special occasions or holidays, there would be dancing. So people in Virginia are emulating and um, continuing these traditions of English dance brought with them. Other colonies, there might be some exceptions. The pilgrims in the New England area weren't crazy about mixed dancing. Uh, they embraced the congregational aspect of dancing, but they didn't want men and women dancing together. So they might have dancing exercise or dancing lesson separately. Marsha, when people think of the 18th century, they automatically think of the minuet. Could you describe what the minuet was during that time period? The minuet is a dance that reflects the Olympian calm of our time and, and born out of the tradition of a, a dance display in the French courts of the previous century. Uh, Virginians wanted to show their expertise in dance. They wanted to display their skill. And so this is a dance that has a moderate sort of tempo, has a basic stepping pattern. So that pattern can be learned. Then it can be put to figures that are uh, traversed in um, symmetrical fashion, mirroring the partner. And at some point, the partners come together and go away and some say tracing the figures of love. So the minuet is stepped one couple at a time while the entire company watches, scrutinizes, observes to look for new stepping patterns and critiques uh, and probably gossips about around the tea tables. Marcia, there's a lot of confusing terms in 18th century dancing. Could you possibly define or explain contra dancing, country dancing, and cotillions? Country dances and set formation dances have been around for a great while, since the Renaissance courts, and there's form and reform. So when we get to the 18th century, we're looking at a tradition um, built uh, up uh, from Elizabethan courts when English country dance becomes sort of a national style of dancing. And so uh, this uh, long way set uh, of dances, uh, symmetrical patterns of um, four couples, round sets, square sets. Um, we have uh, instructions, we have rules, the dance is established. It's country dancing, group dancing. The term contra really comes about in the 1780s when the French cotillion is here in the colonies, the French are our allies, and there is a style of country dance with the four couples that the French refer to as contra dance. It's a country dance, but it is also a specialized dance that has the label of cotillion. So people start referring to contra dance with the French term, and we want to differentiate between the long ways dance and the cotillion. So contra dance becomes a distinction for a long ways dance um, versus the cotillion or the square dance that French are calling contra dance. Marcia, why was it so important for people across all social classes to learn how to dance? When gathering in public for social entertainment, uh, there is a deferential society that is mixing we look at um, betters, lessers, and equals, as Washington says, knowing how to acknowledge these people of different social standing. 
Were there any misconceptions of dancing in the 18th century, things that you'd like to clear up? There is a misconception that the two rows, uh, one of gentlemen, the other of ladies, but taking hands high above, balancing forwards and backwards is a minuet. In fact, Hollywood shows that same movement in about five dis different situations uh, for five different dances. So they're calling a lot of different dances this balancing forwards and backwards.